So welcome back. Uh, we've looked at the deflecting system and you've seen the Y plates do deflect the cathode rays along the vertical axis. We now want to look at the X plates which do deflect the beam along the horizontal axis. And just like we had in the Y plates, if this plate here, which is negative, connected to the negative terminal, and plate A to the positive terminal, then if this was a DC, when we connect a DC here, and when the switch is open, then it means that this beam will fall at the central point. When we now close and we have a complete circuit, then we create an electric field along a horizontal axis. And therefore, when A is positive and B is negative, this beam will be deflected towards plate A. Please note, even though on the board I'll show it that this beam will move towards that point, it's not necessarily on the upper side, it is to the left side. So this beam will not fall at the central point, but it will move towards plate A. Remember, we've seen the two plates. We have A here, it's the one that is positive. So this beam will move towards that plate. So it will fall at that point. If B, if we now interchange this terminal so that B is connected to the positive and A to the negative, then this beam now will be deflected in the opposite direction towards plate B. So it will sweep or it will move on the screen, not along the vertical, but along the horizontal axis. When we have not switched the current across these two plates, then the beam will fall at the central point. If we take this to be the left side and this to be the right side, then when A is made positive, then the beam is attracted towards A and therefore the dot is seen to move towards A until we reach the maximum voltage. When now B is made positive, remember the current will build and as B is being made positive, then this B will move the cathode rays will move towards plate B and the beam will be deflected along the horizontal axis and that's why we call the X plates the deflect, they do deflect the uh, beam along the horizontal axis. Remember in the Cartesian plane the horizontal axis is the X axis and the vertical axis is the Y axis, hence the name X plates for the horizontal deflecting plates and Y plates for the vertical deflecting uh, plates. And in this case, you also notice that the X plates, their input is that of an alternating current. So we don't use the DC. So that the interchange of the plates will be not it, the, the, the current will make the place to interchange the terminals themselves because the A, we have the AC, the alternating current. So we don't use the DC in case we use the alternating current across the X plates so that this beam can continue uh, deflecting along the horizontal as A and B continue interchanging the terminals, depending on the frequency at which we have connected this circuit. However, these X plates are connected to a special circuit called the time base. Remember, an alternating current we expect it to build to maximum, then dies, then dies to minimum, increases to maximum on the opposite direction, then reduces to minimum. But the time base is set such that 
when this voltage increases from maximum on this side, on the opposite side, it increases up to the maximum on the opposite side, the reducing and increasing in the opposite side is cut off. And therefore, we are not going to have this reducing to minimum and increasing to maximum in the opposite direction. It is cut off and we get again back to the other side at maximum and increases to maximum again. <clears throat> so that, in this case, instead of having our usual output, we will have the current increasing from maximum in the opposite direction to maximum in the other direction. Then we kill off the reducing and increasing. It comes to this side, increases again. Then back to maximum in the opposite, it increases again. So we have cut off this, and that's why it's a special uh, current or circuit. We call it the time base. This means that as the dot is moving from the opposite, this is our point P and this is our point N. So it will be moving from P to N. That is N. From P to N. Then when it gets to point N, we won't see this dot now coming back. It will move straight back to point P and it will move again through the screen. Then back to point P, it moves again through the screen. So in that case, if I was to demonstrate that on this screen, then it means that our dot will be moving from this point, which you are calling point P, it goes all the way up to point N. Then instead of the dot being seen to go back, the point flies back and you see it at the starting point. Then it moves to this. Then back to the starting point, it moves to that because we have removed the part of this circuit where the current will be reducing and increasing in the opposite direction. This time that the dot takes to move from the maximum point on one side to the maximum point on the other side, we call it the fly back time. The time taken for this dot to move from the maximum point on one side to the maximum point <clears throat> on the other side. We call that the fly back time. The time base, why the name time? We set this circuit in time base, and that is with, with time. How long will it take this dot to move from this one point to this point within one square? Then if it takes 10 milliseconds, then the time base setting there will be 10 milliseconds per division. If it takes 20, then it will be 20 milliseconds per division. Mostly, the settings used are 10 milliseconds per division and 100 milliseconds per division. Look at it. If this dot is moving between here and here, within 100 milliseconds, when you compare 110, it means the 100, it will take a longer time to cross this gap. And therefore, when we have a higher time base setting, this means that this is a low frequency. And when we have a low frequency, the dot will be seen moving across the, the screen. But when the time base is set with a very low time, 10 milliseconds, it means that it will cover this distance within a very short time. So when the time base setting is low, then it means the frequency is high. And therefore, what will be seen on the screen is the dot, the line, very fast. Then the dot moves back to point P 
and it will always be deflected along the horizontal axis. So this is the X plates, they do deflect the cathode rays along the horizontal axis. They are connected to the time base and the time base is controlled by a knob that is called the time base control knob. We'll be looking at the third part of the CRO that is the screen and also the evacuated glass tube. So we have seen here the Y plates do deflect the cathode rays along the vertical axis. The X plates do deflect mm -hmm. the cathodes along the horizontal axis. Now we need to ask ourselves what will happen when we switch on both the current or the input of the Y plates and also the input of the X plates. When this happens, it means that these cathode rays will be deflected simultaneously vertically and horizontally. And therefore on the screen, what will be observed is a particle or these cathode rays being deflected both horizontally and vertically and therefore we are going to see a wave on the screen. The cathode will form a wave on the screen. Therefore, this is the vertical deflection. If the X plates are switched off, we see the vertical line. If we switch off the Y plates and we switch on the X plates, then we see the horizontal line. When we switch on both of them, then we see a wave where we have the two being uh, deflected. That is the vertical deflection and the horizontal deflection happening at the same time. The other part of this CRO is the evacuated glass tube. You can see all these parts are enclosed in a glass tube. It has to be very strong to protect. Uh, it should not break easily so that we protect all the other parts that are inside. And we are emphasizing that it is evacuated. And we say evacuating is simply removing any particles inside here and more so removing the air particles so that inside this tube will be having a vacuum. So that as the cathodes move from the cathode to the screen, they will not collide with any particles. Remember, if there was to be any collision of any kind, then it is going to lower the kinetic energy of the cathodes. Uh, so the purpose of evacuation is to make sure the cathode rays don't lose kinetic energy when they collide with air particles that could be in the tube if it wasn't evacuated. Finally, we have the screen and we say the purpose of the screen is to glow or to flourish when the cathodes hit or strike this screen. Therefore, to make that happen or for it to fit that purpose, we coat the screen with a fluorescent material and in this case we use zinc sulfide or phosphor. We also have the inner of the tube and the inner of the tube is coated with graphite. The tube is coated with graphite and the purpose of this graphite, remember after the electrons hit the screen and it glows, that is it. So what do we do with them? Then we add this so that the graphite will help now. Remember graphite is a good conductor. So we, it helps in arcing or in connecting these electrons to the ground and therefore it gets rid of them. The other purpose of the graphite is to protect the cathode from any external electric field. If there was any other electric field outside this tube, then it will not affect the cathodes. And finally, 
the other third purpose of this graphite because it's also connected to the positive terminal of the EHT it's at the same potential as the anode therefore it also helps in accelerating the cathodes towards the screen uh, those are the parts of the CRO and you can see simply it's the improved version of the CRT and that brings us to the end of this session after this session we'll be looking at why all this why do we need this CRO we'll be looking at the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope